It's a real blessing to have the privilege to be with you on this Friday, the final day of the normal work week, and I trust you've had a good week. Today I'd like to go to the second to the last chapter of the Word of God, Revelation chapter 21. It's very encouraging to read of the victory that our Savior will have and and how, how all things will be made right. In fact, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and the heavenly Jerusalem will come down to that new earth. And as you read it, it just you just marvel at what God has planned for us. And in the conclusion of the description of all that will be part of that heavenly city and that will be on the new earth, we read something that uh, should stir us. And we read in verse 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. In fact, in the context here, he's talking about the nations of the world. Right now, it looks like ungodly nations have the upper hand. It looks like ungodly people have the un upper hand. But very clearly, when God chooses to move, he has the power. In fact, in Psalm 2, you see the attitude of, of uh, the Lord as he looks at the earth. It's but his footstool. And he that uh, is in the heavens, he laughs when he looks at the arrogancy of mankind. And when it comes to this glorious uh, heavenly Jerusalem and the place that we are going to be to, to dwell and that all the nations and nationalities will be saved and walking in the light of, of the Lord. There'll be no need for the sun for the very brightness of God will light up that place. That verse that I read really just settles it. No one that has any kind of sin will be there. Now, two things that we need to get from that. Number one, we don't need to worry. In the long run, all of the pontificating, all of the things that are said, all of the actions that we see, all of the cruelty, all of the fear, all of the problems, and believe me, all around the world, it's, it's just uh, a, a terrible um, a tragedy of, of the biggest proportions as we see what is going on. But that's all because of sin. And when we look to the future, none of that will be there. Even a person that has just had one lie, and of course nobody's like that, uh, is not able to enter into heaven because nothing that is unrighteous will be in heaven. So we have no need to fear of what's around us. We need to understand that God will make all things right. But that needs to lead us to the very important second perspective. Not only should we be encouraged, but we need to realize that the people around us and the people that we look at that are creating some of this um, real uh, anti-God sentiment are people that desperately need the Lord. I've been encouraged to read of testimonies just on, in the last few years of men who opposed the Lord and were part of philosophies that were very humanistic, that came to the end of themselves and realized that they needed Jesus. I mean, God is doing a great work. Even in our country, I'm amazed at people that are coming to the Lord. And so our heart needs to be to pray that their names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which means that they will be without sin because they have trusted in Christ. But as we think of the future, the future set. The victory is won. We have nothing to fear, and so there's no reason for us right now to be intimidated by what's going on. So be encouraged that the work of Christ on the cross will produce the fullness of victory in the years to come, and in eternity we'll be rejoicing at what he has done for us.